you guys, The Curious Owl here, and today I am bringing you my March wrap up. March was kind of a weird month for me because obviously I moved places, I moved to my new apartment, I started a new job, and I definitely had a lot of books on my plate that I was wanting to read, but I did not get through even half of them, I think. A lot of them I have to push off into April, which I'm a little nervous about because I have a lot of arcs I have to read in April and I've got the house cup going on and everything under the sun and I still have a full-time job so it's gonna be a little weird and I did not finish my novel like I was thinking I was going to time really got away from me this past month with working and stuff and so I definitely did not finish it but I, w I am hoping to finish it in the beginning of April at least within the first week and then taking the rest of the month off to not look at it and hopefully start revising it for the first time in May. So that's going to be a lot, but we'll see what actually happens because what usually happens is I set up a plan for myself for each day after I get home from work. And by the time I get home, I'm so tired from being on my feet for over eight hours usually each day that I usually just want to take a nap. But anyway, so I can't give you guys an exact page count for this month yet because it is not quite the end of the 31st yet. And I still have one more book I want to try to get through at least a little bit today. So I will make sure though in this to leave the page count that I did get to when I edit. But the amount of minutes I read this month was about 1,069, which was about 17 hours and 49 minutes worth of audiobooks. I read one physical book, four eBooks and one audiobook. Three books that I read this month were sent to me and or were ARCs. I had two books that were off of my personal shelf and I had one book that was borrowed from my Overdrive account. So the first book I finished this month was Coral and Bone by Tiffany Duan. This was the first book in the Siren Chronicles trilogy, I believe. And this was my random TBR pick, I think, for February that I pushed off into March because I didn't get time to read it in February during the book two games. It was the least favorite of the month at two stars. The problem with this book was that, and I explained this a lot in the review that I had, is that the book itself was just way too rushed. I felt like I wasn't really understanding a lot of what was going on. It honestly felt like the further I went in the story, the more confused I got. I really just didn't like it. I felt like it was just really a first draft that had never been looked at and was just kind of passed off as a finished novel when it really really wasn't. It was so rushed and really kind of just crappy that I really didn't like it. There were some things about it that I think were great. The overall concept was cool and the theory of it was really interesting, but the overall execution was kind of subpar. The second book I read was the audiobook for the Scorpio Races by Maggie Steve Otter. I gave this a three out of five stars because it wasn't awful, but it definitely wasn't fantastic. I will say that I really liked the mystical element that there was within it about the Kapolishka. The story pretty much followed these two characters who one was a four-time winner of the Scorpio races which is a horse race that goes on on this island and he is trying to win again so that he is able to kind of just move on with his life and get away from the things that he's dealing with and then the other character is basically trying to get into this competition as a woman whereas the entire competition has been basically dominated by men and she's trying to win so she can win money in order for her family to survive because her older brother has decided to move to the mainland, leaving her and her younger brother to basically fend for themselves. And so she's trying to kind of support them by winning this race, but is being really, really looked at funny for the fact that she is entering as a woman. The story itself I think was really cool, but I honestly thought that it could have been just done from one perspective. I don't think I really needed the male perspective within the story. I would have been just fine with the female character's perspective, but it wasn't really that memorable for me. I felt like it was okay and it was enjoyable for when I was listening to it, but I wouldn't really be able to even be able to tell you what exactly happened. The next book I read was an arc for To Best the Boys by Mary Weber, which came out on March 19th and oh my god this was the favorite book for the month by far. This is a story about a girl who gets involved in a competition that is only supposed to be for boys and essentially goes into this competition where she's put in a maze and has to solve a bunch of puzzles and the winner essentially gets to be able to test in to this incredibly affluent university and where she is basically in her life is that she is a kind of almost 
scientist. She works with her dad, who's a doctor, and they're trying to find a cure for the sickness that is ravaging this city and is honestly taking the life of her mother. And she wants to be able to win so she can be able to go to university and not only prove to herself that she can do this, but prove to all the people in this town that she is able to do it, even as a woman, and ultimately find a cure to save her mom. This book was so freaking great. I have no other way to describe it. It was just freaking great. I had posted my review on Goodreads and Amazon and Barnes and Noble and on NetGalley. So I will leave my link in the description for you guys to check it out on Goodreads. This book was just absolutely amazing. It was funny. It was suspenseful. It was really, really intelligently written. There was an amazing main character that I just fell in love with from the very beginning, a wonderful love interest, an awesome antagonist. And the overall concept of the maze I think was just really, really cool because because it kind of reminded me of the Maze Runner in some ways, but I think it reminded me more of the Maze from Goblet of Fire in the Harry Potter series. Like it had a little bit more of a Goblet of Fire kind of idea going on with it. And it was really, really cool. The next book I read was an a advanced reader copy of Descendant of the Crane by Joan Hay. This also was probably one of my favorites for the month. I gave this a five out of five stars. This is a more high fantasy story dealing with a young woman who essentially is dealing with the loss of her father who was this emperor of this land and she believes that he was murdered as opposed to just passing away of natural causes. However, the entire kingdom is not really supporting that idea. They think he might have just died of natural causes and it's really up to the main character named Hesina to find out what really happened to her dad and what is exactly going on within this kingdom now that she is becoming empress because there are a lot of secrets involved with involving magic and deception and things of that nature and people kind of just taking advantage of the situation that is going on within this kingdom and it's kind of up to her to fix things before it's too late. She joins up with several different colorful characters that really help her along the way and honestly I think the thing that I love the most about this was the overall relationships with each of the individual characters that Hesina had because she works with her brother, she works with this ex-convict who's supposed to help her solve this mystery of what happened to her dad. She has two adopted siblings that are absolutely hilarious and wonderful to read about. She has a half-brother from a mistress that her, her dad had when she was a lot younger. And just every single character in this story I felt was incredibly important to the story, which is really good because I always have a hard time with big cast of characters because I have a hard time usually with making distinctions between each individual character but thankfully and one of the things that I mentioned in my review of it is that the story makes it easy for you to distinguish between each individual character because they all have very distinct voices and very distinct relationship dynamics with Hesina. Each person that she interacts with, she has a very distinct way of talking with them and their relationship is very very clear in their dialogue and things of that nature. It just makes the story a lot easier to go through by having those very distinct relationships. And I will also leave the link for that review on Goodreads and down in the description for you guys. The next book I read was the first book in the Morganville Vampire series, Glass Houses, which is the beginning of my Morganville Vampires reread. And I have to say, I was a little disappointed with the beginning of this series. For those of you that don't know, The Morganville Vampires by Rachel Kane is one of my most favorite series of all time. I started reading it when I was in early high school and it was a series that I actually read with my grandmother. So I have very fond memories with reading this series from beginning to end. However, on upon rereading the very first story, which is in this volume, Glass Houses, I was greatly surprised that I didn't like it as much as I originally thought I did. The thing I think that I have realized is that as I've gotten older, I am starting to realize that Rachel Kane's writing was a little more on the younger side. This was very much written, I think, for someone who is like 15, 16 years old because the main character is a 16 year old girl. The story basically follows a girl named Claire who has moved to a city called Morganville, Texas. And while she's there, she is bullied beyond belief at the college that she's accepted to early at because there are a lot of girls there that basically make fun of her for being a brainiac. Because she's being severely bullied and is severely attacked by these girls, she runs away from the dorm and tries to find a place to live and stumbles upon the place called Glass House, which is run by a boy named Michael Glass who is 18 and his two roommates, Shane Collins and Eve Rosser, both also 18. 
The story is basically following Claire as she's getting to know Shane, even Michael, and understanding this town that she's exactly living in because it turns out that the town is completely run by vampires. So Claire is basically just trying to figure out what the heck's going on and I think that that's a part of the charm that comes with this series is you're really understanding Claire's perspective throughout the entire thing. You're going through everything with her which is one of the reasons I love this series so much. But I think the overall writing is a little bit more on the young side because it's definitely I think catered towards someone who is a little bit more on the younger side of the YA spectrum. I think that it's definitely something for people who are getting into paranormal fantasy and and not for like your seasoned veterans of paranormal fantasy. I think though that overall it was fine. I just really was surprised to see that I didn't like that writing style as much but that's mostly because I'm on the older side of the YA spectrum and now at 21 years old so I can recognize that the writing is not as strong as it could have been but I still love the first story. The story itself was really great. I just think the writing was a little on the weird side for me having it been so long since I read the, the story itself. So I ended up giving it a four out of five stars and I'm still really excited to read the rest of the series because it has been a very long time since I have and I'm looking forward to see if Rachel Kane actually changes the writing style in any way throughout the rest of the series now that I kind of have a baseline idea of it. And the last book I finished because I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish the next book I'm planning on reading throughout the end of the 31st was Necropolis PD by Nathan Summerson. This was another four star read for me and this I was received from NetGalley as an as a advanced reader copy. The book itself comes out on April 2nd I believe and this is a I would consider a new adult mystery that is more on the paranormal fantasy side. Allow me to explain. So basically this story is dealing with this guy named Jacob Green who stumbles across this place called Necropolis. It is essentially a hidden world within our world that is filled with dead people. And how Jacob kind of comes across it is he witnesses an accident and follows this guy who steals some money from one of the people that is dying in this accident and just happens to fall into Necropolis and from there is basically recruited to being the only living individual on the police force of Necropolis. There are some mysterious deaths going on within this town, which is very strange considering that everybody there is dead. But there are some mysterious deaths happening within the town and it is up to Jacob to team up with the police force of Necropolis and figure out what the heck is going on because nobody has any idea of what is happening. It was a really interesting story. I thought at first it was a little slow and a little weird, like I wasn't quite able to get my bearings for probably the first several chapters, but once I got sucked in, I just sucked right into it because I thought that it was actually kind of funny in a lot of parts. It had a lot of great humor. It also was really well paced, surprisingly. I wouldn't consider it like the best book by any means, but for a debut novel for this author, Nathan, he is really got something going. I'm excited to hear if it becomes a bigger series because the end of this book definitely lent to the idea that there could have possibly been a second book or maybe more stories within Necropolis itself whether it's following Jacob or another character because I think that the world itself is kind of vast and it definitely lends to the idea of being something worth exploring more. The only things I will say about it that I didn't care so much for, for were the fact that the world kind of just felt a little confusing because I don't feel like I got quite enough of a good glimpse of what the world looked like. It basically is really gloomy and pretty much is made up of different parts of forgotten parts of cities. So essentially each part of the city is made up of a part of a city in the real world that was forgotten like abandoned shops or warehouses or something like that. But I didn't get a, quite a clear enough picture I think or understanding of how the world itself was built. So I was a little confused with it. The other thing was that there were some flashbacks that were used within the story that were fine. I enjoyed them, but I think that the flashbacks would have just been fine as like the exposition of the story and kind of going from how, the very beginning of how Jacob even got to Necropolis and then starting the real story from there, as opposed to having the story go on and then having a flashback. It just kind of made things a little weird for me personally, but 
I definitely understand why it was used in the way it was. Overall, I gave it a four out of five stars. I really liked it and I highly recommend it. And I do hope that Nathan decides to come out with another book within this series or world because I definitely think that there's a lot that can be done with it. And honestly, made me a lot more excited to work on my mystery novel some more. So those were all the books I read in March. I didn't read too, too much. I think I read through just under half of the books I wanted to, but that's okay. The month was really crazy for me anyway with my personal life. So so I don't expect it to get any different. I have so many books to read in April that are ARCs specifically, so we'll see if I actually get through them. But anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me in this video. If you guys did enjoy it, please do give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not already and you'd like to be, hit the button down below and subscribe to become an owl at our flock. And I will see all of you guys in my next video. Bye guys.